Baylor women's basketball is so freaking back. <laughs> this is Locked On Baylor. You are Locked On Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another episode of Locked On Bay. We're brought to you by FanDuel. I'm your host, Cam Stewart. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. The only place you can get nonstop Baylor content every day that's not directly affiliated with the university. So we're trying to keep it real with you. Today, I know I know the men's team played well last night. Got to win. But today is ladies' night because... The team formerly known as the Baylor Lady Bears are so back, so back. We're going to tell you why and just how they are back in the second segment. But first, just starting with the obvious, a top five victory for the first time in three, four seasons. I think it was twenty early 2020 when they beat UConn, uh, who was number one at the time. But the Bears upset number four Utah at the Farrell Center, the last great matchup in the Farrell Center, both men's or women's, either one. And Baylor was the better team from the jump. From the jump. I think they jump out 10 nothing. They end up winning by seven. And Utah leads for a grand total of zero seconds in this game. Wire to wire. Nikki Collins fighting Bears win this one. Her first top five win as a college head coach in this year, number three at Baylor. Um, something she had mentioned after the game, which I think is important, um, that we'll talk more about in the second segment, is these are all her players now. And this was as good a women's basketball victory as we felt here. It's probably since that UConn game back in early 2020. It was the most excited I have been about a game in, in years, probably since that Elite Eight game against UConn uh, three years ago now. And... This this was awesome. The electricity in, in the Farrell Center was palpable. For a building that was only about half full, um, they said they set the student attendance record. Um, no shade against the students. I just that find it hard to believe, having been there and seen it. Um, the student section was about ah, 70% full on that side. And I've just I've been in crowds that were bigger than that. I I, I guess I'm misremembering, but just definitely have seen pictures um, and been in crowds that were bigger than that. But the the point I'm trying to make is that it was only about half full, the arena, weeknight, um, but the place was electric. Like, they really brought it for a women's basketball crowd. Like, that was, that was a good atmosphere. Um, obviously, Nikki mentions that after the game. Uh, the Utah coach mentions it first saying this was this was a good environment to play in and get used to um it, it was hostile it really had an effect on the game i mean there were a few times where utah players just forgot the rules man like i think three up and down travels where they just went up in the air and didn't know what they were doing with it um one of which the girl was she was getting a screen in front of her for a three and she went up and then came back down. She was open. I, I don't know why she didn't shoot the three. That was another big advantage for Baylor in the game was that Utah, as I mentioned, was one of the best three-point shooting teams in the nation coming into this, and they're only 6 of 24 for the game, 25%. And Baylor ends up shooting it much better, uh, 10 of 24 uh, from three. And that wasn't, that wasn't the key to the game for Baylor, but it certainly helped. Um, one of the keys they did say that worked really well was getting um, Alyssa Peely, the All-American, uh, an absolute banger down low, uh, one of the best low post players in the entire nation. She was in foul trouble early. Um, Nikki Collin acknowledged that after the game that she said the best way we can defend her is her watching from the bench. And she got two fouls within the first two or three minutes, and she plays less than 21 minutes on the night. Um, good fight from this Utah team, but that's what you expect from a top five squad. And you don't expect a top five squad to not have a lead at all in the game. And the best part about this was, and we'll talk about how this kind of plays into this team going forward is no part of it seemed fluky. No part of it. N no, nowhere in that game. Did you feel like, Oh man, you know, Utah just doesn't have their best player tonight or Baylor's never going to hit threes like this, or Utah can't hit the broad side of a barn. 
it, it didn't feel like that at all. I mean, Baylor did it in all facets, inside, outside, offense, defense. Um, they played a really, really good basketball game from start to finish. They showed their depth. They showed their grit. They showed uh, plenty of skill. This was no fluke. This was no fluke tonight, uh, beating the number four team in the nation. And the thing that that makes me say that is just there's a being at the game and, and seeing it, but nothing that really stands out. I thought um, Baylor was gritty on the boards, and I liked how they played on in the rebounding department. Only come to find out they were out rebounded, forty to thirty four in that respect, and on both ends of it. You know, Utah had more offensive and defensive rebounds. Um, but the thing that, that ends up being the kind of difference in this and, and to show the grit and the defense that Baylor is playing is they do win the turnover battle. They force 18, 18 of them against the top five team that, that shows you the work that they've been putting in and that they've been talking about. That's where it comes out. And you saw a good team, uh, a, again, a deep team and a very mature team. Uh, because this was one that had been through a lot last year with the injuries, and they had a lot of trouble closing out games. They were in a lot of games. They didn't close a lot of them out. They closed them out perfectly tonight. Um, I think Utah had cut it to one or two um, in the third quarter, and from there they were uh, Bella Fontmoroy. Fontleroy. God, I can never say that name right. Sorry, Bella. Um, hits the big three before the end of the third quarter, and they just don't look back. Um, it was all them in the fourth, and they hit the free throws down the stretch, something that Utah did struggle with as well. Shout out to the Bear Pit on that one. Um, this was huge. This was huge, and I really think this can carry over into being kind of the spearhead of something special with this team. But I, I look down at, at all the names on here, and, I mean, first off, they got – Pretty much everyone in the game, Katarina Ferreira even got in for 14 seconds. But I, I look down at the list and I think nobody played poorly tonight. Everyone gave them something. Triana Edwards. I've avoided <laughs> saying that name for seven and a half minutes into this podcast. She is awesome. Oh, she is a beast. She looked like, again, I talked about the player we were promised. She looked like one of the best players in the country tonight especially at the beginning of that game. She just absolutely brought all the energy, both sides of the floor, making tough shots, hitting threes, which isn't you know her, her number one part of her game. She was hitting threes. She was drawing fouls, drawing charges, making big plays, getting active hands, and, and getting the crowd fired up. She is an All-American type player, and I think he got a couple of those on this Baylor team, but that was, again, the one... We didn't know about, you know, sitting out for a whole year last year, not through any fault of her own. Um, this this is going to be her revenge tour, and I am so excited to be here for it. Um, Baylor cannot put out a ton of length on you like they used to do under Kim Mulkey, but they can give you good, hard, tough defending. And um, they were defending the paint as well as you could have um, with, with – with the kind of bigs that I mean, I mean, really just Peely. Um, but what the what Utah can do in the low post, and it was so impressive tonight. Again, not fluky, just good hard basketball. The way Nikki Collin wants this team to play, the way we want this team to play. It was such a great game to be at. Um, again, the atmosphere, the way Baylor won. Um, it was it was awesome. This is going to be a special product this year, and if you're not getting out there to the Farrell Center and then the Foster Pavilion on days where, you know, it, it, they don't match up a lot. You know, the men will play on Saturday, the women will play on Sunday. There's there's going to be no excuse. This is going to be a fun, fun team to be around. That will not be the only game I'm at this year, and I, I hope that's that's not the case for you either. So I do think this is the start of something. I think this is going to be a good team, and we're going to talk more about that in a minute just after this. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, 
and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride. I know, crazy. Every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber. You ain't burning cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the Naismith Player of the Year and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And that guaranteed fit is only available to our customers in the U.S. So how does this win lead to something? I talk about a special win. I've I've said that on this podcast before. The one I remember is the 28-point comeback for the football team at UCF. And I said, boy, this is special, a where-were-you kind of game. The thing that's going to make it really count, though, is if you turn it into something. And obviously the football team did not. And I wonder what that game will, how that will live on in the annals of Baylor history. But I don't know because it didn't turn into anything. It went to what will possibly be a three and nine season. Now, this Lady Bear squad, I don't think they will make the same mistake. I think this team is ready to win and take the next step for this unit that was so often the expectation, that next step that was the expectation year after year after year under Kim Mulkey. And that is really to be a conference contender. Obviously under her, it was mostly the conference favorite, but I think this team, the one I saw play last night against Utah, can absolutely win the Big 12. Absolutely. They're so back because all of what I talked about in the first segment, this is a complete team. They're going to struggle against size and, and low post matchups this season that that doesn't just go away uh, because Alyssa Peely got a couple fouls early in the game, but they handled it well. And that was part of the strategy and it worked. They went at her. They drew some early fouls on her and it worked. They took her out of the game. I mean, literally, and she wasn't able to do the things that she is so good at for most of the game because of being in that foul trouble. Um, Triana Edwards, all American, all American, 32 minutes, six of 11 from the floor, two of four from three, six rebounds to go along with 14 points, two steals, three assists, four blocks, plus 12, led the team in plus minus. She, again, all over the floor, even the things you don't get to just read off the box score. Um, she was defending well. She was getting the crowd into it at every turn, which was just so cool to see, um, to bring some juice into that building that that this team desperately lacked last year, to be totally honest. I know women's basketball isn't always a huge draw, even at a school like Baylor, um, and it's it's sad, but it's something they needed last year. And again, looking back at last year, this was a team that was just behind the eight ball from the start. I mean, the injuries after injury after injury. and I think maybe never getting out of that mindset of when is Driana coming back? When's Driana going to be eligible? When's she going to be able to play through again, no fault of her own, but she never gets to. So your, your best player is essentially your best player is out the whole season. And then everyone else gets hurt. It just put a lot on the plates of, you know, Caitlin Bickle and, and, um, and Sarah Andrews and Dariana little page bugs who, by the way, I liked the role that she played last night. It wasn't her best game overall, three of nine from the floor, but plays over 30 minutes. She she was thrust into a bigger role last year, did well with it. But I think as a sophomore, this is, this is what she's going to be. 31 minutes, seven points, 10 rebounds. How about this for efficiency? Five on each end, five offensive, five defensive. Again, I, I do think they're going to struggle against height when she's the tallest player on the court. But she is gritty, and she's shown that she can defend bigger than she actually is. And that's what I love to see. And and so that's all the point of this is a complete team. You've got your All-American slasher um, wing, if you will, um, Andreana Edwards. You've got a a center who's going to play mostly forward, but you're you're five um, in Dariana Little-Page Bugs who can play bigger than she is and brings intensity 
on the boards. And Sarah Andrews was once again lights out tonight. She she showed the leadership of a senior in a big game, making shots all over the floor. Let's go over her stat line here. Sarah Andrews, if I told you she if I told you she's four of 12 from the floor, you'd be like, Cameron, what are you talking about? This is the one who led them to victory down the stretch, four of 12. Yes. Yes. Four of 12 from the floor, four of six from three. Hit some big ones. And then something she struggled with in her career, six of six from the free throw line to close things out. She gave you, uh, I'm, I'm smiling ear to ear, man. This is so awesome. She gave you, which she's done before, the closeout point guard performance that great teams have. Because as good as Shreana Edwards was, she wasn't getting the buckets down the stretch. Sarah Andrews was. She was like, hey, it's, it's my time. I'm the leader of this team. I'm going to make this happen. So she goes for 18 points and um, and two assists, two steals as well, plus eight. Um, that is that is the key. You're going to get All-American performances from Drayana Edwards this year. From what we've seen in her career and what we've seen in the first two games, you're going to get grit from Little Page Bugs. You're going to get depth and shooting with Bella Fauntleroy. But when Sarah Andrews is giving you what she gave you tonight, you are a force to be reckoned with. And they've matched up well with Iowa State in the past. I know Texas is still the odds-on favorite in this league. And Kansas has raised their profile quite a bit the last couple of years. Um, in the last year of, of this Big 12, before teams like Utah come in and bring in a good program, uh, Arizona brings in a good program. This is a team that can absolutely win the conference. And I'm so excited to watch. I really am because I think they become the second favorite after this. If they weren't already, this is a team that's going to potentially move into the top 10 next week. Probably on the outside looking in in the top 10, but could make that move with the upsets we've seen early in the season in this sport. Um, it was just all around a great night. And I think what's going to be all around a great season. And it makes me think of right before the 2021 tournament, the Baylor Lariat put out um, a big full page spread. that said the basketball capital of America, Waco, Texas. That's where it's going to be again. Men won last night. I probably still gave up some easy looks, but that's an excellent team. Depth and scoring and talent and putting it together on the defensive end. D'Antoine Grimes. More great minutes. Oh, D'Antoine Grimes. Um, so the men are going to be final four contenders. The women are conference contenders. And in this conference, that means if you're winning this conference, you can absolutely be a final four team. That's a long way off from this team early in the season. But from what I saw against Utah, this is going to be a force to be reckoned with. I'm so excited. What what do you what are your expectations after this win over number four? Drop that in the comment section below. We still got time left in the show, but I want to know. I want to know. Am I being crazy about this? Am, am I wrong to think that this is automatically the second best team in the conference after a win like they had against Utah and the full roster that they have this year that they didn't have last year? Let me know. Let me know. We got some football to talk about and an interesting name that came up starting yesterday. Uh, we're talking about replacing a coach who isn't fired yet with another coach who also isn't fired yet. And that's my favorite kind of speculation on this show. First, I got to tell you that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. This is a great time. Still, I know baseball's been over, but this is a great time for sports, man. NFL, we're separating the men from the boys. Same thing with college football. College basketball is now in season, men's and women. And obviously, Baylor's got a great team here. NBA, NHL, it's all going on. So if you don't think it's the best time, you're wrong, my, my friend. And to convince you otherwise or convince you further uh, that you are wrong, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet with FanDuel. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining, this is the time. It's so easy to use. A caveman can do it. That's me. I'm bad at it. 
but I'm much better with FanDuel. You can do anything with spreads, players, props, over-unders, anything you can think of you can put money on, you can do it at FanDuel. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off this great time of year the best way possible. FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly. The hot rumor out of the City of Angels is that UCLA coach Chip Kelly is going to be fired here pretty soon. And it's not surprising. And obviously down here in Bear Country, there's been a lot of talk and speculation whether Dave Aranda is going to be one of those coaches fired during the Toyota December to Remember sales event. And it's very possible. Very possible. So to me, the first thing I thought of of is that's another job that's bigger than Baylor, UCLA, who has the high, Chip Kelly is the highest paid California state employee. I know that's not surprising for a lot of college football coaches. It is for Chip Kelly in the state of California, especially with what you had to do to get Lincoln Riley at the other school across the street. So this is a big job is what I mean by that. It's a big job and it's going into the Big Ten which is much more attractive than it was in the Pac-12. Um, but it's a program that's dead at UCLA. I mean, you see the pictures every week. They get scores, dozens of people at their game at uh, the Rose Bowl. And it's a, it's a basketball school. I mean, really, it's a film school at this point. They just, they, they just don't care that much about football or about baseball, which is always really good. Uh, it's California, man. It's, it sucks as a sports place. And so I think still <laughs> it's a bigger job than Baylor. So that's the first thing I think of. We talked about this on the show recently of the schools that are above you in the pecking order that are getting their coaching search started before you are. And then I saw some traction on social media, not a ton, but some of saying, well, if Chip Kelly's gone, Forget about UCLA being open. What if Baylor's open? Could Chip Kelly be the next head coach at Baylor with the track record he has in college football? And I am here to tell you guys, boy, this is interesting. No chance. Keep him away. Chip Kelly? What year is this? 2011? Let me read off some of what Chip Kelly is because you're thinking about, whatever, 46 and 7 Chip Kelly at, at Oregon in his four years there. I promise you guys, he's not that anymore. And the first thing I read about it was Bill Plaschke, longtime sports writer in LA, um, did a great column about this, about how it's time to fire Chip Kelly. And this is one of the graphs that I want to read word for word. Tell me if it reminds you of anybody. Smart guy, bad program. Great mind, boring program. Decorated leader, backward program I don't mind you of anyone we know smart guy bad program great mind boring program I don't know man sounds exactly like the guy you're trying to get fired right now it sounds exactly like Dave Aranda in the position that Baylor is in and yet there are people who are like well let's replace Dave Aranda with offensive Dave Aranda Chip Kelly was once a great Great offensive mind. You cannot deny that. Obviously, at Oregon, I being a Patriots fan, Belichick used to love bringing him into training camp and picking his brain about offense. Um, he got the shot twice at the NFL level. It didn't work out. His GM skills weren't that great either. And let's see what he's done since going back to college football and the Pac-12 at UCLA. Six seasons. His record going into this weekend, 33 and 33. <laughs> Doesn't get much more mid than that. And beyond that, no bowl wins in six seasons. This is no bowl wins, let alone a conference championship. Not even close. Never less than three Pac-12 losses. Never. He automatically spotting him three conference losses each year. That's not going to get you to championships. Never. Five and 13 against ranked teams in the Pac-12. And in six seasons, 
seven wins against teams that finished with a record over 500. That sound like the, the football coach you want in there? How about this? I know we're we're suckers for great offenses. We yearn for the days of the Bryles offense. How about his offenses at UCLA? First four years in terms of total offense ranked in the nation, 75th, 65th, 21st, and then back down to 30th. Last year, they got up to 4th. Whoa, he's turned the corner. That's why they had high expectations this year. This year, 34th. 34th. I mean, Baylor would kill for 34th, but when you're bringing in and investing in a guy like Chip Kelly and 34th is the best you could do after being top five the year before, I'm good. I'm set. I'll take Jeff Traylor over him any day of the week at, at this point. And, he, and and like Plasky says in that column, he doesn't really invoke much in this program. He doesn't bring the energy and the recruiting that he did at Oregon. Doesn't bring the excitement around a program that he did at Oregon. That that went way out the door. When he took the job with the Eagles, that, that left. And everyone, all, all the discourse around um, his job at UCLA, uh, specifically with the fans, is that there's just no belief in, in the system there. Um, which is, again, exactly what you're facing here. It's exactly what you're facing here. This is offensive Dave Aranda. And just because an offense was good 12 years ago does not mean it's going to be good in the year year of our Lord, 2023. You know who you can ask about that? Ask the opponent this week. Ask the TCU fans how they like a great offense from 10 years ago with Kendall Bryles. It's not working. These guys are in the same boat. Chip Kelly and Art Bryles, or excuse me, Kendall Bryles. <laughs> those two weren't in the same boat. But in terms of how they have not been able to adapt, those Kendall Bryles numbers sound a lot, or excuse me, the Gary, golly, I can't talk. The Chip Kelly numbers sound a lot like what Kendall's offenses were at Arkansas. Sounds a lot like it. Underwhelming. Big underwhelming. So Chip Kelly, it's a, it's a no for me, dog. Now, another interesting name that came up, Gary Patterson. Was on the Matt Mosley show on ESPN Central Texas yesterday. Uh, a colleague of mine, Matt Mosley, he comes on an hour after Drake and I finish up. Um, and Gary says, "Hey, I'm ready to coach again. I ain't pulled my name out of this." And he's like Barry Bonds when he unofficially retired, and then in like tw- like six years later, it was like, "Okay, finally, I'm retired." Gary Patterson's not done. He says, and he says he's got a whole staff. He's just been playing golf, and and when he gets the call, he's giving his guys the call. He's ready to go. Could you believe what would happen if Gary Patterson coached the Baylor Bears? I would take it in a heartbeat. I'd take it in a heartbeat. So quick. Has the game passed him by? I don't know about that. Maybe it sounds hypocritical to some people who, when I say basically the game has passed Chip Kelly by, but I don't know that it's passed Gary Patterson by. He would obviously never do it, and I don't think Baylor would ever do it. But how great would that be? This is a Hall of Fame coach. This is one of the best coaches of a generation. He knows how to build things out of the dust. We're not giving him dust here. We're not giving him a lot, but he could get this program back winning and and get excitement around this place. It would be the funniest thing ever, what it would do to this fan base and to TCU's fan base. Uh, but give me Gary Patterson over Chip Kelly any day of the week. Any day. That's going to do it for us here at Locked On Baylor today. Tomorrow we're going to talk more about this TCU game upcoming and the rivalry in general. I've got some guests on this week um, who are going to talk about seeing it from both sides of things, and it's a fun week. Not in the way that Mac Rhodes says. I don't think it's like playing your brother or your sister. I want to win this game at all costs. I hate those guys, and they hate us, which is perfect. It's great. Um, but love talking about this rivalry any way we can. So thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. I truly appreciate you guys. Uh, Drop a like, drop a subscribe. If you haven't already, we're just over 2,000 followers. We want to push that to 3,000. Drop a comment in there about what who you think, what you think about Chip Kelly or Gary Patterson or Baylor women's basketball. We love it all, and we are back tomorrow. Thank you for making this what it is, and that is Locked on Baylor.